So George Pycraft, we're here in front of the museum's Valentine tank. Yes. Tell me a little bit about this machine. Uh, well, this particular one was built in 1940. It's a Mark V. Uh, it's painted in the South Pacific colours, the colours that they would have used when they were actually fighting in the Pacific theatre. Uh, and they're, they're quite famous in their own right. Now, there were 258 Valentines in the New Zealand Army. Uh, that's, we had Mark IIs, Mark Threes, and Mark Fives. And uh, what's interesting about them is that they got rid of most of them uh, in the 1960s. Um, there's a few still running around in New Zealand, a few collectors have got them, and uh, good on them, because uh, I think our heritage in the future is going to rely on the amount of effort that these guys put in uh, to keep you know, our heritage alive in that way. So this particular model, I mean, you say it's it's painted in um, Pacific colours. Was this vehicle in the Pacific at all, or just New Zealand based? This particular one wasn't. We have got one that served there in in the collection. Um, about, and I don't, not sure of the figure here. About twenty one or twenty two of them were sent to Australia and upgraded to, instead of having this uh, little. Um, 37 millimeter, which is a two pound gun, uh, they were put up to a 75 millimeter, which is a three inch gun. And they were used against the Japanese on places like Nissan Island and, and uh, Guadalcanal and places like that. So uh, those, all those ones actually went up into the islands and I believe they all came back, but there's not many of those around in the country. In fact, I don't know of another one. Um, but yeah, they uh, they went. Uh, we've had quite a few of them. So Valentine's in the New Zealand Army was that um, was the New Zealand Army prior to to the start of the Second World War getting into tanks, or was this a direct result of the war effort? I think it was a direct result of the war effort. Um, but prior to the Second World War, we really didn't have a lot. Um, I am guessing that they would have probably wouldn't have come into service in New Zealand until probably 42, about 1942. There were three of them in North Africa and they were used for training only because of course we used the Stuart and that sort of thing up there. So when all the, the New Zealand Valentines were retired, what were they replaced with? The Valentines were replaced with Centurions and then M41 fairly quickly after that. The Centurion served a very short space of time until the M41 tank came in. Uh, we also have a running M41 in our collection. Um, and of course, uh, there's another couple in the country that are still going. George, so you mentioned to me earlier on that, that this vehicle was a runner? It is a runner. It runs very, very nicely. Uh, we had a little bit of fun because it has in the system a little bit of total loss in the oil system and we were wondering why we were dripping uh, little drips when we drove it around camp all over the roads and then discovered that the bottle that was the catch bottle was shattered to little pieces and it was going straight out of there and onto the roads. Uh, we've since corrected that problem and uh, yeah it runs very very nicely, quite easy to start um, it's got a 671 Detroit engine in it, uh, which moves it along quite quickly. They had a top speed of about 27 mile an hour was their rated top speed. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's okay. quite good. Um, how often do you manage to get this one out and give it a good burst? Um, oh, usually once every month sometimes, once every couple of months, depending on the time of the year. Over Christmas it sits for a few months, but again, to start it, it's just a case of jumping in, turning it on and pressing a button. Right, so it's, it's not so much a yes, the tank runs because we start it once every couple of years, it's, it's actually kept in a, in a running right. condition. Yes, definitely, definitely. And, and I believe that that's generally how you like to operate most of your, your vehicle collection? We try to. We try to. Um, as I say, there's a, a museum ethics thing that comes into this. 
a lot of the museum ethics throughout the world will say that the vehicle must not run. It must be brought up to a standard where it's preserved and conserved in the condition it's in. And then there's the other um, ethics side of it that says that if it's not running, people won't be interested in it. And I find with my group of volunteers, if a vehicle's not running, they will go out of their way to ensure that vehicle is a runner and do some work on it to get it going, and then they will retain their interest in that running vehicle. But as soon as we say, oh, that vehicle doesn't have to run again, it's left by the side and nobody bothers with it. Other museums work on that same principle. Uh, the stuff that's sitting there, nobody bothers with anymore, which is sad because I would like to think that when I'm gone for many years in the future, that we will have a running vehicle. Right, so one of the key points of differentiation for the, for the Army Museum then is that, um, yeah, the, the, the collection is a, for want of a better term, a living collection. A living collection. And I find that's very, very important.